right. So my special guest today is Matt Gerchow. He uh, makes multiple five figures a month, uh, expert at SEO. He's the founder of nichebuilder.com, which is a awesome membership site that teaches you how to make money online. And as one of my favorite things about him is he's traveled the world, uh, basically living the internet marketing lifestyle. A lot of the things that you're sold in these internet marketing uh, videos and uh, products out there, Matt's actually done. And I'm not just talking about traveling, but he's actually lived in these places for several months at a time. Um, so Matt, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, Greg? Awesome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so I want to give people a little bit of context uh, to how I know Matt, because I think that's pretty important. So I met Matt about a year ago at the internet marketing party. So I live here in Austin, Texas, and Matt was here visiting. And what got my attention about Matt is we just kind of walked up to each other and he said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm visiting here from Mexico. I just kind of decided to come here and visit. And I'm thinking about moving here to Austin. And I thought that was really awesome because, you know, you don't, meet too many people that just kind of like wander into a different city and um, just say, I'm thinking about just relocating here just on a whim. And so that really got my attention. And, um, you know, eventually Matt did move here a couple months later, like you said. And, um, you know, we met up a couple times more at the internet marketing party and just became friends from there. So I just want to kind of give that context because it's, uh, I think it's important to, to, uh, for, to, you know, know how how i meet these certain people that I interview and stuff so it's, um it, rather than just you know sometimes you uh, randomly meet at an event and things like that so it's it's cool to uh to kind of know, know the context of this relationship and stuff so let's just dive right into these questions here so i've got a couple of questions um that um i know you know the answer to and this is kind of uh, you've kind of alluded to these the times that we have hung out and stuff so i think these are some awesome questions that will give people a lot of value that are tuned into this. So you had mentioned that your success came for, or, or let's just put it this way. So there's, you know, there's a million different ways to make money online, offline. Um, what was the, the, the vehicle that basically got you from a job to freedom, basically living the internet marketing lifestyle? Well, what, what took me, it's, it's kind of a long story, but what took me from the job to not having a job was getting fired. Um, back in 2001, I was working at a real estate holding company out of Miami. They were a fairly large, uh, multiple billion dollar company. And when 9-11 hit, uh, every department had to lay someone off. I was the newest guy there. And also I I didn't really like what I was doing. They knew it. And uh, so they said, well, we're, we're going to cut our ties. So I started doing real estate investing. And, you know, much like the internet marketing game, it, it took a long time. Um, I never set any records in getting things done fast. I would, would get into something, but um, I would just stick with it, you know, and I love what Gary Vaynerchuk says, how like, I'm here to get hit, right? What I think separates us and makes us stronger is the ability to just get beat up over and over and over again and, and still get up and get in front of the computer that next day or later on that night um, and, and just keep going and, and just keep pushing through it. So what took me from job to no job in looks like you're getting some praise there on uh, yeah somebody's tuning in <laughs> yeah. didn't expect this but um so i was i was living in columbia and i had had a bunch of real estate in miami the real estate market turned and i decided that i'm going to bail the country and i was in the process of moving to argentina and I decided to move to Colombia after I met Sandra, who's now my wife. And while, when, as soon as I got to Colombia, it was like, okay, I can take a breath. You know, there's no collection companies calling. There's no uh, pressure from the real estate market collapsing and dealing with all that. And it was like, I was able to just really see clearly, okay, what do I want to do? Well, 
the challenge was everywhere, every direction I turned was, uh, I just hit a, hit a brick wall. Like I couldn't work in Colombia because I didn't speak Spanish. I couldn't invest in real estate down there because I wasn't a citizen. I couldn't work in Colombia because I wasn't a Colombian citizen, which, you know, and you could analyze this 10 different ways. What it came down to is I got to make money on the internet. So I was building a company called MLS Gorilla, where what it would do is it would take the properties out of the multiple listing service, and then it would merge them with certain data fields, and it would produce an offer to purchase that then you could send to the listing agent. And what we would do is we'd offer like 40 cents on the dollar, and what we're trying to do is identify short sales. And so I worked on that for a while, and then I I just dealt with so many development issues that I I just kind of stopped working on it. Um, Then we found out that my wife was pregnant, and she was not going to be able to work later on down the road, which presented a whole new set of challenges. I was kind of dinking around with some affiliate marketing uh, trying to get some things going, but uh, actually, actually, I had a website called realestateinvesting.com, and it had hyphens between the words. And I was trying to get that going as a social network, and that was uh, that had its own challenges. If anyone's ever tried to create a social network, you know that that's not the easiest thing to do. You really have to get the traction within the market and the support of that market. Well, it's kind of hard to do when you're in a foreign country. Uh, one of the things I realized was that a lot of people look at you as that foreigner now. Once you get to the foreign country, foreign country, they don't consider you like an expat that is down there. But uh, the vehicle, so I, so I sold that company, and we immediately took off traveling. Um, we left for uh, San Andres Island, yeah, which is off of the coast of Costa Rica, and we were there for a month came back for a month and then we left for Thailand for six months. And that was all from this company. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met my current business partner, John Schroeder as well. Uh, We had been friends through my, you know, basically about a year before I left and I kept in touch with him after I got down there. And then uh, he's a developer and he was able to take my MLS gorilla program And I had spent about two years trying to develop it. And within three weeks, he was able to rewrite it for me. And then a month after that, I was able to sell it for close to $100,000. How did you, you you, you know, because I've heard of companies selling things like that, softwares and licensing and then just selling companies in general. How, How did you... I mean, you have some experience in that, but how do you find that buyer? Yeah, so all, you know, all companies, it sounds like, okay, yeah, you just, it's kind of like when someone gets a job, right? You assume that they send in a resume and the people called them where nine times out of 10, it's like so-and-so knows so-and-so yeah. and they got you an interview and yeah, maybe you're not qualified on paper, but you're the best person for the job. Right. right? Um, kind of similar situation. Uh, so a guy named Zach Childress, who's a fairly major real estate marketer, uh, he, he wasn't at the time. He was working with Jeff Adams at the time. And um, I came to him with this project and I said, you know, I said, uh, Zach, um, would you want to become my partner in this and invest some money into it? Well, he ended up investing a uh, good I want to say 20, 30 grand into getting it done and getting it to market. And the thing was taken off like hotcakes. I was in the, I was in the foreign country mode and I was presented with a situation where he offered to buy me out of the company and having a baby on the way, it made a lot of sense. I think there was, um, you know, Zach was going to be out traveling the country, promoting it. I don't think that it made the best sense for him to have a business partner in it. And realistically, he went through so much crap with that software. 
Uh, you know, I wish him the very best. But he ended up buying it off me, and I got my first wire transfer on that uh, about seven hours before Mateo was born. Dang. And it, I went from, you know, you know the entrepreneurial story as well as anyone. I went from being in Colombia, living on uh, a tiny bit of money that my parents had given us for the wedding, and that was dwindling to nothing. I mean, we're, we're not talking about a big amount of money. We're talking a couple grand. And my wife was having to stop work to have the baby. And now we had, um, now we had money. Right. And so I did the logical thing. I planned a trip for a month to a remote island. Right? So, so it basically happened overnight, but it was like five years and overnight. <laughs> yeah, five years and overnight. So we went to Thailand for six months, ran out of money. I got a, a large tax return in while we were over there. We came back to Colombia. Um, I now had about two grand a month in affiliate income. And I was uh, uh, making that go in Colombia somehow, right? Did you kind of teach yourself that in that time i guess well so so what it was is i took some of the money and i bought some sites off flipa okay and i was nurturing those all through thailand and using that over there i had uh maybe 1300 a month which wasn't enough but i had a little bit of the money left and somehow we made it work right mm -hmm. it was stressful though i i highly don't recommend that you do the travel with anticipation that you're just going to make money mm. over there somehow. Mm. Okay. Um, but at the same time, you know, had I not gone with that intention, I may never, may have never gone. Right. And you said, you, you were telling me, you know, you were like urging me, you got to travel. You absolutely got to travel. Has that really affected your view, I guess, of the world or your success in internet marketing in any way of having those perspectives? I look at it this way, like we're, we're doing quite well financially now, but I've been in the Philippines with $700 in the bank and no return tickets and a one-year-old and a wife and living in an apartment where they're sucking the air out of both sides because they've got improper ventilation. So you're just like, you feel like you're dying <laughs> and it's 110 degrees. Okay. And there's the air condition will bring it down to about 90 and having a fear that is unhealthy. But now when I look at situations that I face here in the first world, I'm just like, whatever I've seen and experienced so much more, you know, felt so much more than this, that really the problems I have now just, just seem so small in comparison. So when we got back to Columbia, it was like, okay, I've got some sites, they're making money, but I need more sites. And I worked very hard at convincing my business partner, John, who's now my business partner, to create this website hosting solution that would essentially do what he was doing with Real Website, one of his companies. He's, he's creating real estate websites, but this would create more affiliate-based websites. And it would promote what at the time we called the niche traffic model. Um, sorry, no, that is correct. Niche traffic model. Uh, the company at the time was called Niche Traffic Builder. Mm -hmm. And the way it worked is you would build little satellite sites that all fed your main money site. Gotcha. And so when, when that first copy of that went live, I was able to build like 23 websites in 28 hours. It was like, it was like a, a massive impact on getting sites out to the market. About two months later, uh, that's now making 300 bucks a day. And I'm living in a culture where $10,000 a month is like brain searching. So it, it really gave me the ability to uh, kind of take a breath again and say, okay, what do we want to do? And from there, um, I forget where we went next, but we, uh, we, how did you get, how did you come up with that like strategy that you, you knew that that would work, I guess, or well, just some sites that were already making money. 
I had affiliate sites that are already making a little bit of money, and all I did was uh, create more of the same sites, mm -hmm. the same, just based on different keywords. Now that strategy isn't as strong anymore because this is all prior to uh, Penguin and Panda and all the other updates that have happened along the way. But it was a solid strategy back then. What, what about what year was that? 2011, 2010, okay. 2011. Not too, dang, not too long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So from there, I, I believe our next trip was back to Thailand. Um, and we, we went to Vietnam for a while. We went to Thailand, went to Singapore, uh, and just kept on traveling to different countries and, and enjoying uh, automated income. It was kind of one of those things that I didn't know when it was going to end. And right. I felt like, I feel like I've lived like seven lifetimes already. Like, <laughs> just been done so much stuff. And, you know, I, I lived in like five different states in the United States uh, and, and had businesses or worked, uh, you know, prominent jobs in each of them. And, have, and my whole thing originally was, okay, if I can get to Thailand and live there for six months, well, anything else after that is a bonus. I'm kind of ready to die, right? It's just, I, I oh, it sounds like the family's coming home. <laughs> um, so in regards to travel, you know, I guess one of the things that kind of keeps me from it or has kept me from it so far, just not knowing what to do, not knowing how to do it. Um, and I think, you know, from talking to you, that seems to kind of be some of the lies that we tell ourselves, but it seems like you just kind of did it, you know, you, in, in order to learn how to do it, you just like, forget it. I'll, I'll fail, whatever, whatever it takes. I'm just going to do it and figure it out. Um, and you said that was one of the greatest things you've, you, you did, and, you know, you met, went back, multiple times. I'm sure the second time was better than the first, but you, you went there the first time, experienced it, and it seemed to really have a, a big impact on the way you approach things. I would, yeah, you know, if I could do it again, um, I would recommend moving to a country that's within your same time zone, the north or south from where you're at currently. So we're here in Austin. You could go to Panama or to Argentina just to kind of get your feet wet. Yeah, you can do a lot more. What, what, what happened to me in Thailand was I got over there expecting to have some really big deals go through right after I got over there. And they both fell apart. I was exactly 12 hours different. So midnight to me was noon and noon to me was midnight. Mm. And so, and, and it just, I got sick when I got there. I wasn't able to keep in touch with people as well. And I had two deals for about 60 grand together that was going to finance my first trip that both fell, fell apart within, I don't know, I, I want to say uh, about six days after I got to Thailand. Dang. And it, if I could do it again, you know, I, I like to say that I wouldn't change anything, but I probably would have traveled to something that was on the same time zone. So I could have gotten those deals closed and uh, or I probably would have waited until those deals closed. But as we know, when you're waiting to get things done before you go, before you do, uh, things just never happen, right? Yeah. Well, so it kind of, to put a ballpark number on it, to uh, gives people some idea of like what it would cost to, to just, I'm not talking about living luxuriously over there, but just, just to live just to live over there oh my gosh. I'm not talking about staying in like a five-star hotel or anything, but um. yeah, no, you could go and you could stay at, there's this lady, they call her mama and she has mama's restaurant and she'll rent you a room for 150 bucks a month. We didn't stay this, this inexpensively, but uh, mostly because we have the family, but otherwise I would, I have friends that are UFC fighters that, stayed there and they were perfectly happy with it. So you get a room for 150 bucks a month and then she, she serves the most awesome Thai food and it's like a dollar 50 a meal. Wow. And that includes like the most awesome curry, pineapple shake and like a couple, like I think an egg roll or two, you know? So you're like, you can't eat it all. 
you know, and, and rice and you can't eat it all. And she has a nice pool there. And so for like 400, 500 bucks a month, you could be living there. But um, I would, I would budget for a single person about two grand a month for a family. I would budget uh, four grand a month. Mm-hmm. And this is in addition to your flights. Right. Which I've heard is like the most expensive thing. Once you get there, it's not really that expensive to, to live. Moving around is what's expensive. Once you get somewhere in the third world, it's pretty inexpensive. Cool. So you did the real estate thing, you got the software and that kind of helped snowball and fund this initial part of, of your journey in internet marketing. And then from there you went to kind of SEO, like niche sites. Mm-hmm. And basically you didn't try to learn this initially from scratch. You just went and bought existing sites that are already profitable, right? I highly recommend that if you've got 10 grand to spend on getting started, you really need to do your due diligence, like really do your due diligence because there's so much scam and so much garbage out there. But if you can buy something that's already making a dollar one, oh my gosh, the, the sites I bought, um, we're making on the high side like 500 a month, something like that. And I'm not going to disclose the numbers publicly, but I've disclosed them with you. There, there's quite a bit of difference uh, between what they were making then and, and what they make now. Mm. Uh, so you still got some of those sites? Oh, yeah. Wow, cool. Because I've heard, you know, like mixed reviews. Your video like might have paused there. Oh, you're back. Uh, <laughs> I've heard I've heard mixed reviews kind of on basically any platform out there, but like with Flippa, there's the the horror stories that go along with the the positive ones as well. So your as your results been pretty much positive with dealing with people. No, actually, I stopped buying on Flippa because I I got the the initial sites were good, um, but I had like four losers right after that. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like, wow. And, and what it came down to finally was I had niche builder and I could build my own sites. So I didn't need to just be at the mercy. But what you end up with on Flip a lot of times, you have people that are just cranking out sites just one after another. And then they're selling off the ones that didn't work for them mm. or the ones that aren't too profitable. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. So but- they're trying just whatever they can for them. I like what I you said in the beginning, though, but the thing that separates, I, I guess, entrepreneurs, especially in internet marketing from everybody else is like, you've got some winners, but you had some losers. Some people might have taken that hit and quit altogether just because they had maybe four in a row. That would have been enough to knock them down and quit you, forever. You know, let me tell you about my real estate investing story. It took me 18 months to buy my first property. And then I lost $38,000 on that property. Mm, that's painful. Most people would quit then. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Get their lumps. Yeah. Um, somehow, I mean, I remember when I realized that I was going to be taking this loss was when we went to visit the property, this, this duplex in this terrible neighborhood. And the guy that was doing my plumbing decided he's going to just rip all my walls and ceilings out to put the plumbing in. And I remember my legs just buckling and I'm just sitting, you know, just sitting there going, Oh my God, I'm 102 grand in debt on this thing. Yeah. What am I going to do? Right. And it was just, it was one of those moments where you're at the low of the low of the low in your life. And it's kind of like that moment in the Philippines, you just, you, you somehow get through it, right? Yep. But that makes you so strong for the next thing, right? That might that moment might have made me strong for the moment in the Philippines. Yeah. I have kind um, of the same situation. Not as I haven't had a loss as big as that, but like zero it means nothing to me. Like if I have zero, that's great. That's because I've been twenty, thirty, forty thousand in debt. <laughs> so what I was gonna share is that is that okay, so thirty eight K the first 18 months, Mm -hmm. but then I think I cleared 250 the next year and 500 the year after that. And so it was like, how many people ever get 
even to that 18th month without finding anything, right? How many people, I see it all the time. We have people start niche builder all the time and they quit in 30 days, not even 30 days. We have people quit the next day. And I'm just like, wow, freedom is like, it's there. Yes, you have to work for it, but oh my God, I just, I feel so sorry for people when they quit. I'm just like, wow, you're just, you're just not grabbing hold of your possible chance of freedom. Yeah. And, and like kind of to go along with that, I look back at everything that I've ever done online and I think 100% of the things I've done pretty much have worked. They've made me some money. They've made me at least a dollar. They may have taken a year to make me that dollar, but I, I give up. I've given up too soon. And, and then when I come back, I'm like, wow, it actually worked. I just didn't give it enough love and time to just scale it up and master it. Yeah. You know? But I, I mean, when I was a teenager, I made money in ammo. <laughs> I took two years of getting kicked in the face in that business. I feel a little jaded towards it. I wasn't really, uh, I, you know, I made some money, but I spent a lot more money than I made. And I think that's true for a lot of people in those MLM businesses. But it was one of those things that like, if I read a stock book on something, I'll sit down and apply myself until it works. Mm -hmm. And we live in a nation of quitters. In, in my opinion, we just got so many people that are ready to quit. You know, they look at celebrities and everybody living the good life and having just easy, easy street. Right. Yeah. But our media is designed to do that. It's, it's designed to show these success stories, but never to show the work. And so it's like, it's weird. Like you've seen this people buy 27, 37, $57 products and expect it to freaking work in a month. And it, it's just not the way the world works. Uh, you know, even Snapchat or Twitter or any of these companies that look like the unicorns, like, oh, they just put, you know, like Blab, the technology we're using right now. People don't see the 18 hours a day that goes into making this go. Uh, you get on Niche Builder and people are like, oh, I couldn't figure out how to do this. It must be garbage. There's 2 million lines of code behind it, right? Yeah. That are constantly like, what it does, are you familiar with Native Commerce by Ryan Dice? Uh, familiar with their company a little bit. With like Survival Life and DIY yeah. Ready and those blogs. What, what Niche Builder does is it implements that, you know, which is just a massive model, but they're doing $20 million a year with that model, right? And to expect it to be like just, you know, they've got 150 employees implementing those models. Right. So for someone to expect to sit down and just have everything be click, click easy to set up something that has potential to make them millions of dollars. It's like, give me a freaking break. You know, you yeah. just have to before. And before we had niche builder, we just had WordPress and we're trying to put everything together manually. And it was just an absolute nightmare. My body used to physically lock up doing WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> you know? A little carpal tunnel. Absolutely. It's just like, I'm not a programmer. Like every single part of it is exactly opposite to what I think uh, or, or to what my body feels it should, it should do. Mm. You know? And I'm sure that um, you're saying you're not a programmer. This builder is pretty amazing on the inside. And you were the one or you the main person behind giving kind of those orders to Design and uh, the main person behind that, I would say that I'm kind of the the uh, the squeaky wheel, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I uh, I will say what we need, and I have the most contact with our customers, um, so I'm constantly requesting new features and and uh, new models and and uh, working with them to uh, put them in place. But John and Sasha and Boban. Are, are three, you know, dedicated programmers and, and they're off and on, you know, 16, 18 hours a day, just cranking this, uh, you know, we just released our new autoresponder. Um, we just constantly coming out with new tools. We've got a drag and drop page builder coming uh, at the end of next month. Just, just exciting stuff. It's an exciting uh, niche to be in. 
No pun intended. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I want to ask you about this. Uh, so I've noticed in the last couple of months, you've probably been doing this for years, but I've noticed um, in the Facebook feed the last couple of months, you've been going to a lot of different masterminds. And I actually met you at a live event, uh, Internet Marketing Party. Uh, so for those of you in Austin or visiting internetmarketingparty.com, that's a great meetup, .com, uh, meetup uh, group to come and be a part of for internet marketers. But like, what, how long have you been going to these kind of events and getting out and what impact has ha that had on your, your business and your success? I've been going to events. Um, the first internet marketing event I went to was in 2003 or 2005-ish. Uh, it was Altitude out in Los Angeles with Evan Pagan. Wow. Huh. Get Altitude, yeah. That really blew my mind. It was a $10,000 for a week event. And I met a lot of people that I still keep, you know, loose contact with. That's where I met John Benson, uh, Telman Knudsen, Dean Jackson, um, gosh, who else was Brett Fogel, just was, uh, just saw him at Traffic and Conversion. Um, just, just a lot of people were, were, uh, Ryan Kaltman from the Rich Jerk, or was, he was the Rich Jerk at that time. Now it's Kelly Felix. Uh, just a lot of people were at that event. And I just love it, man. I, I just love the camaraderie that we have at these events and the ability to network and just the friendships. You know, you're, you're out there and it's like, okay, you can go to your local bar, right? I can go. I've got a brewery down the street from me. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's a bunch of idiots. And that right. doesn't take anything away from them. Sometimes you need a bunch of idiots to hang out with, right? right. But if you're going to be out drinking and partying and horsing around, you might as well be having really intelligent conversation with people that are like-minded to you, right? People that want to do the same things. They have the same kind of end goals, right? Uh, and then you make the ability to do cross promotions. Um, but for me, it's just been about, it, it's been about learning strategies and tactics and just gaining as much knowledge as I can. You know, if you look at Elon Musk, Elon Musk is a child. He read every book in his library to the point where they had to order more books for him. Um, if you look at, uh, oh gosh, so many people. Uh, Warren Buffett, he reads four to five hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, what is the guy that, uh, what's, what's the guy from Dubai? Um, Calm um, Com Mirza, yeah. Yeah. Okay, he reads four hours a day. And before he had money, he read four hours a day. Wow. But still taking at least two hours a day of marketing content, inspirational content, just as much as I can, because it's like whatever you, whatever you can learn, you can pass on, mm -hmm. right? You can apply, you can pass on, you can digest. And, and we're just in kind of a constant learning game. I, I don't know. Like for me, I thrive on. I, I just enjoy it. That's kind of what one of my big goals to, you know, becoming more and more successful is to free up more time so I can have more time to read, basically, so I can get smarter, so I can make more money. So I, can yeah, I highly recommend, uh, you know, you've got an iPhone. Um, I've probably got them in my pocket. It seems like I don't go anywhere without them. Uh, I just got my Bose headphones, and they've got the little – connector you'll run into me everywhere on the street and i've got these things in you probably saw me with them in at uh whole foods when we ran into each other yeah yeah and this little connector will pause your phone call or pause the youtube or pause the audio mm -hmm. and i'm just trying to take in as much as i can as often as i can so like audiobooks do you do that uh i do audiobooks i've got a, a high level subscription to audible um i love one of the things i love about being back in the states is i can and, sorry, United States. And people always get on me. They're like, don't call it the States. Or actually one friend from Germany. They don't call it the States. There's states in every country. And right, there are states in every country. But one of the things I like about being in the United States is I can get YouTube. And YouTube Red is one of the best subscriptions that I've got right now. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I just only know a couple of programs, though. No, it's, it's not programs. YouTube uh -huh. Red is a uh, subscription free. Uh, sorry, yeah, a commercial free. Ah, gotcha. No more ads. Okay. And it also lets you 
uh, do other apps on your iPhone without ending the video. Oh, awesome. You can go to your navigation, so you can go to uh, your, your Gmail or whatever else you're doing without ending the audio. And that's just allowed me to get so much more in. Awesome. I think you've already kind of answered this, but I wanted to ask you, um, what, what do you feel is the most what are one of the most important qualities or characteristics that really separates people from that, that make it or, and that can be any level really, but uh, I guess freeing yourself up from your, your nine to five job from those that, that don't, or, um, you know, basic, basically, what do you feel that separates those who try from those who actually achieve it? Love, um, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is, is, I consider him a, a hero. Aside from whatever happened in his personal life, he's, he, I used to compete in the bodybuilding world, and I, I just think the guy has accomplished so much. Well, he's got six rules, and I've been teaching them to my son. And the rule number one is trust yourself. Rule number two is break some rules. Mm -hmm. Rule number three, I've got them up here on my wall, is don't be afraid to fail. Rule number four is don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the people that tell you you can't do it. Rule number five is work your butt off. And rule number six is give something back. Is, is it give something Yep. Give something and those are just what my son knows them better than I do. Um, he's just got a, a sharper memory than I do and he's six. But uh, the, the biggest thing that, that I don't even see up there is just, I, I guess it would be don't listen to the naysayers kind of, because I've had situations where people very close to me have told me, don't get your hopes up. Mm -hmm. you know. And I, what do you mean? Don't get my hopes up. I got my entire hopes on this. Screen. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is my ticket. You know, it's like, I mean, I guess, I guess they don't want to see me disappointed or something, but it's like, Man, I got my entire, whatever you do, if you put your entire heart and soul into it and you work at 8 to faint, and I don't mean 8 till 3 p.m. faint. I mean 8 till 3 a.m. faint. I used to fall asleep with the laptop in my in my lap for like two, three hours, and then I'd wake back up and go right back to work. Yeah. That's what, you, that's what it takes to be successful. And I love what Gary Vee says. He says people need to stop freaking kidding themselves. Quit, at, quit, quit pretending to be entrepreneurs, right? Because it takes hammering at something. And, oh, you know, it, it's like you just go and you go and you go and you go. I remember working on projects for weeks at a time, trying to figure out one little line of coding on realestateinvesting.com because I thought if I can just get this, I can, you know, it was to do with AWeber and connecting the AWeber form so that the people could sign up for real estate investing and get added to my AWeber list at the same time. <laughs> Seems pretty reasonable, right? But God forbid a social network company like Ning, if anyone's ever worked with Ning and they know my pain, would make it so that you could put your autoresponder sequence on the back end of the sign-up form, right? Of the registration form. So you could start sending people emails uh, after they sign up, you know, which is kind of a, a given. If, if you sign up for Facebook, look how many emails say Facebook send you, right? Because people just get in with the terms and conditions. But I remember working on things for weeks at a time. And so what separates it? Man, it's just not giving up on yourself. Don't quit yourself. And, and that's the biggest advice that I would give anybody. Don't quit yourself. I see people quit themselves all the time the time and it just it makes me sad but the you know i heard kurt molly say something on a, on a blab you know kurt mm -hmm. and he said he said your competition uh doesn't want to get out of bed because mommy didn't hug them daddy left too early each morning or uh you know some little girl told you know shut him down right he goes that's your competition so if you're just consistent and you get out of bed and you make the video where other people don't, you're going to win every time. And I, I, I have to agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. That's been kind of my experience too. It's like, 
I don't even call it this really work because it's never, you know, I, I grew up in the South and working, working to me is like outside in the field, hoeing for three hours a day in the yeah. at noon or something or picking peas. Like that's work. Work, work has dirty fingernails. Yeah. Right? Like this, I just call effort because it's going to take effort, but it's not, not work. You know, it's just, it's frustrating when you can't figure out a solution to something, but it's still not work. It's just, I mean, you're sitting inside an air conditioner and behind a laptop pressing right. buttons. Right. Like what? Oh, my butt's sore. I've been sitting. <laughs> yeah. Well, stand up, do some jumping jacks and get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, I uh, came across this quote by Jack Ma. Uh, Alibaba founder the other day. I wrote it on my little board up here. Yeah, okay. like, poor, poor people fail because of one reason. Their whole life is about waiting. And I kind of found that to be true too, especially with like business opportunities because, you know, I feel like when people fail at business opportunities, it's, or when, when, when they jump into it, they say like, what, what have you got for me? What's this like opportunity? Are you going to like, lay the, the magical formula in my lap and, and make me money. And like, it's never the case. And when it fails because they don't do any work, they jump to the next person that promises them that. I, love, I heard a saying and I, I, I want to give the person credit, but I can't think of who it was right now. They said, people who believe in magic will always believe in magic. No matter <laughs> what you tell them. And, and that's just, you know, we've been trained by Disney to like believe in magic, right? And there, there is no magic. Unfortunately, it was someone in the weight loss industry. Actually, it was uh, Robbie Navarro. There, I'll give you credit. Um, I think you know Robbie as well. He used to be at Six Pack Shortcuts, and now is a shot of adrenaline. Um, so, people who believe in magic, we've been trained to believe in magic our entire life. We've been shown so many quick solutions, right? And then when someone doesn't have it, I, I mean, if, if someone's actually got a real you know, seven minute, 27 minute solution. Hey, bring it to me. Let me, let me, let me put a couple of interns on it and see if they can make it work. Right. But I joined Amway on what I thought was supposed to be a, you know, one year to millionaire. Yeah. And I don't think I ever made more than 400 bucks in a month. So oh, it's better than most. <laughs> and it's, it's way better than most. Right. What I find is that people that believe in magic are always going to believe in magic. And in order to get skeptics off the couch, it's almost like you have to preach this magic, right? Oh, that's and, the downside. Like I just got done reading a couple copywriting books because I'm trying to get better at that. And one of the one of the leads is the secret lead, uh, convincing people there's some magical secret. Like I'm almost tempted, you know, when I first met you that first night, it was like, Tell me all these things you've done, all the you know traveling, and I always think want to ask you what is your secret? How did you make it? And then then you learn well, there's a lot of hard work, and then it, then it kind of things fell into place. Yeah. Like, and it's <laughs> you, know, you look at Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week. The guy works eighty hours a week uh, to pitch the four hour work week, right? Yeah. And and all of his other products as well. I mean, he's a hard, hard worker, and I respect the guy and all that he's done. But he's not living the four-hour work week. And no. I, I came pretty close to it. It's at one point uh, we were in Costa Rica. I wasn't working at all, and and had significant, you know, um, significant money coming every day. And so I didn't have to work. Uh, and I would say. If I could give a piece of advice to people, I would say focus on automated income. Uh, you being the auto profit, what is it? Auto profit income? <laughs> yeah. Um, you get this, right? Focus on passive income. Okay, so I'm giving you my hours today. How does this affect me, uh, you know, two years from now? Am I still going to see a return from this two years from now? When we sit and make this video, I remember uh, some of my videos, I stayed up in, in Costa Rica till 4 a.m. and I had terrible allergies and I couldn't sleep. And I, I uh, just decided, okay, I'm gonna make one more video. Well, that one more video that I made is, has made me probably a quarter million dollars. And had I not done that, I would be, I'd have a quarter million dollars less. You know, and so it's like just that one more, can I do one more thing before you go to bed? 
is there anything left undone? Uh, there was a guy, Brad Wildemott, that was my Amway upline. And I got a lot of great things from him, a lot of great business training. And that was one of the things he used to say, is there anything left undone? Is there anything I can do before I go to bed that, to push my business forward? You know, and I, and I would just challenge everybody to do the same. Also, um, what separates, one of the things I've been doing that Calm Mears had turned me on to was writing my goals every single day. I rewrite my goals. I've got about 16 goals and I write them every single day. But then I have another document that I do. And on that document, I, you know, I write the goals pretty detailed. Okay. They're each about three lines long. And then I come up with one to do item for each of them each day. Mm. And so then I've got my to do list for the day. I've got 16 things I'm going to get done. And if I can get four of those 16 things done that day, I'm extremely happy. Uh, you know, what's going to move? It, it really depends on what I'm looking for in life at the time. If I need to move the income needle, then I'm going to focus on income related stuff. If I need to move the social needle or the Mateo needle or stuff for Sandra, then I'm going to work on that. Um, but that's that's kind of how I, I lead my day is from my goals list versus the to-do list. Uh, what happens there is it causes you to be proactive in the way you do things versus reactionary. A lot of people, what they do is they sit down in the morning, they go through their email, and they go through Facebook, and then they build a to-do list based around the things that they need to react to. This website's not working. Uh, I need I need to get a phone call from you about X Y Z. Um, I I can't find my way into this property, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, they just people will give you a to do list if you don't have one for yourself. So, That's true. <laughs> yeah, I like to start. You know, I I try to get up by four a.m. and have my stuff all figured out by six a.m. and then anything that happens is kind of noise. You know, for the most part, I just cruising through and getting my stuff done. And anything for the most part that happens is just bouncing off me because I know what I'm trying to get done for the day. And really, that's all that matters at the end. Right? If someone else doesn't get what they're looking for done from me for that day, well, it's a, it's a shame, but it's not moving me closer to my goals. Right? And it's like every action you take should be working towards your towards your goals and you need to really fight for that time. You know, um, Gary Vee says fight for seconds, right? <laughs> well, I grew up with two brothers that are both bigger than me. So fight for seconds for me is like more about eating fast so I can eat again at dinner. But I fight for minutes. You know, I've got uh, my son here. He wants to go to Splash, which is at Barton Creek Museum. And we're going to do that right after this. And then it's Tuesday. I think I've got another appointment at uh, 8 o'clock tonight. And then tomorrow we've got a dinner where we're having some Internet marketers over. Um, and it's just every everything is planned now, right? And I'm planning it uh, versus just I remember times even during my travel where I just kind of bobble through life and let things kind of go and whatnot. And you really just, you need to, it, depending on what you want at the time, I just wanted to do that, right? So depending on what you want, you, you just have to be proactive in, in actually chasing things every day. Sure, you're more aware of this, but something that I'm becoming slowly more aware of is like, you like the only thing that you can't ever buy back is that time and you've got a limited amount. So you've got to delegate it really, you know, wisely. <laughs> Yeah. How much time do we waste in Facebook? How much time do we spend searching through email to find something to work on? Right. Yeah. You know, and it's like, whatever your goals are, just do that. I mean, I would say best advice to anybody is to write your goals every single morning. Uh, Tom Mirza says to write them four times a day. And I would agree. Every time I, every time I sit down at the computer and I'm like, okay, what do I have to work on? Well, one, I've got the to-do list for all my goals, right? But if I don't have that to-do list, if I didn't make it, I'll go back and rewrite all my goals and then write the to-do list from my goals. Mm -hmm. And and that just is a way to, it's just weird how it works because it's like you start internalizing it and start just 
you, you feel closer to your goals when you're when you're writing them all the time and and, uh, and you see them every single day. It just it makes them so much more real. Awesome. Well, one one last question um, is, you know, if you if all you had if you had all this taken away, but it, all you had was what you've learned along the way. And you had a thousand bucks of leverage, whether that be a thousand bucks cash in the bank uh, or a thousand dollars on the credit card. Maybe you have enough to get by, but it's just enough to pay your bills, cover all expenses, and you just got this money on the side, whether it be you know cash in the bank, thousand bucks, or thousand bucks on the credit card, which I think is pretty uh, doable, pretty realistic circumstance for most Americans. What would you do to increase that, knowing what you know, what the experience? Increase the money. Increase that, or or what advice would you give to other people in that same situation? Because a lot of people, they may be thinking, this is all I have, but it's not enough to do what Matt's done or what some of these other marketers are doing. Yeah, it's it's hard to say, but I, I mean, I would look at ways to generate money from nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we have? Like this blab is going to go up on YouTube, right? We'll get traffic to this video from there, okay? Uh, people will opt in from there, and then you can send them offers on a regular basis in addition to great content. Um, I would I would say make YouTube videos, and I would find videos that have tons of views and, and make similar videos and just go after that market, you know. Uh, reverse other people's funnels. See what they're doing. Copy. So basically just be completely original, right? Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, would, I would go out and I would I would make content. You know, uh, what's so cool? Like you look at what we're doing here. How long would it take me to write this out? How long would it take you to write this out? A long I've been time. Talking for close to an hour, right? Uh, but how long would it take someone to actually go and transcribe this? Now that the data's put together. Well, I don't know how long it takes them, but I know it's a buck a minute. <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. Now you've got content. So let's say let's say we talk. That's you know you spend sixty bucks on that. You load part of that into YouTube and you create three separate text blog posts out of this. And then you load this video up to YouTube as well as onto your website. And then you start building a list from that. And then you take and you send those people emails telling them about your life and offering them things that you think might better theirs. So that's, that's what I would say in order to start building it up again. Cool. And I just want to reinforce what you said about finding free ways because regardless of all the opportunities and things out there, there are to spend money on, there are still opportunities that are completely free or, you know, other than the cost of the equipment would to make this a microphone, a computer, which most pro people probably have watching this. There's so many free little pockets of ways to make money out there. You just have to kind of put a little effort. And I would, uh, yeah, I would take the thousand dollars and I would buy a MacBook Air. <laughs> That's what I would recommend someone do. Uh, I I start got started on a little Sony Bio laptop, and it was torturing compared to my life with a MacBook. <laughs> put the affiliate link to the Apple. Uh, <laughs> free it just it's made my life so much better yeah the like quality of life higher if you're if you're doing this on a pc you're doing it wrong in my opinion cool so um what 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 are some of the projects that you're working on where can people learn more about you or, or uh, some of the tools some of the um, projects that we've mentioned so far well, I know you're going to post this interview. I, I'm also going to post this up on uh, gameofmarketing.com. I've been interviewing other entrepreneurs uh, in the marketing space, um, kind of people here in Austin, as well as other people that, uh, that I think have prominent businesses that are doing stuff that's exciting. Uh, you can also get me at Niche Builder. Um, you can reach me at matt at nichebuilder.com. And uh, you find me on Facebook. Just search for Matt Gerchow and, and I look for uh, usually the picture with my family. Uh, just friend me up. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Matt. Appreciate you. it. Again, Michelle. All right, man. I will see you on Thursday night. All right. See you, man. Thanks. Bye.